Hello everybody and welcome back. This is part 4 of the tutorial how to wire up the NRF24L01 on the Arduino. So just to recap, in parts 1 and 2 we went through some basic theory and then we wired up the two NRF24L01s on two different Arduinos and we used one as a transmitter and one as a receiver. So that's all well and good, but we want them to be transceivers. So in part three, I went through some more in-depth theory on how we can achieve um, getting the transceivers to actually work as transceivers. So therefore being able to transmit and receive. I went through some necessary theory there. And this leaves us at part four. And at part four, I'm going to show you how to code up to be able to get the two transceivers to work properly. Okay, so I've spent some time with these NRF24s and I've also spent some time trying to code them up in an efficient way which is easy to write. So this is the best I can come up with and I'll explain it now. So we'll start with the transmitter. So you need to include include the libraries and then you need a char array, I've called it message, and this array is going to hold the message which you're going to transmit, or the transmitter is going to transmit. So in this case I've written, hi Sonia, and that's my, mess my transmission message. Then I've got another character array of 27 uh, cells to hold the message which this transmitter expects to receive. Um, I've also got the name of the channel which the NRS are going to communicate on. So both the transmitter and the receiver need to both be sharing this pipe. Then of course set up the driver with pins 9 and 10 which there's more info on on my first videos. Then if I come down here so I'll go to this enable. So enable ACK payload. This allows us to inject extra data into the ACK payload, which is going back to the um, to the transmitter. Enable dynamic payloads. This is a thing that allows you to transmit a message which is the same size or less than the maximum transmission size. So in other words, if you've got a small message, it sends a small message. It doesn't pad it out with extra data just to fill um, to fill a known size. It, it doesn't matter too much about that. But Right, set retries. This is very basically um, an amount of time in multiples of 250 uh, nanoseconds in which to retry sending a message and an amount of times before giving up, if I remember rightly. Um, open the writing pipe, we've done that in um, in the first video. But it basically prepares the driver to to write. Okay, so the, the, the loop now. So if radio.write, in other words, if write has worked, because this returns a boolean. If write has worked, then do all this. If it hasn't worked, then print that cannot transmit. So going back to if it can work. So if it can work, it does it. And it writes um, everything from the message character array to the pipe. And it transmits whatever size we tell it. In here I'm saying full size of whatever the character array is, which in this case I think is 27. Then after it's transmitted, it checks to see if an ACK payload is available. And if there is, then read it into the character array uh, above, the receive character array, and read 27 characters into it. Okay, and then we want it to delay, each loop we want it to delay one second, we want it to wait for one second, that's between each transmission. 
So that's the transmitter code. Then the receiver code is similar in lots of ways. I think it starts getting different here. So open the reading pipe. So it opens the reading pipe instead of a writing pipe, of course. And then it starts listening for transmissions. So in the loop, if there's any radio available, in other words, if there's any transmissions there to read, then read them into the receive buffer and read in the size of the receive, bu receive buffer, which in this case is 27. So attempt to read in 27 characters into that array. Then, as soon as you've received, then write an ACK payload and write, in, write it to this channel and then write whatever the contents of the message character array is, which in this case is, hello Anthony, oh, hi Anthony. So try and write that in the ACK payload and then write in the size of the array, which again is 27. And then delay or do this every 500 milliseconds. So attempt to read every 500 milliseconds. And if you've noticed on here, we read or attempt to read twice as many times as we transmit. And that's good because we don't want a buffer to fill up and we need to be listening more than talking so that we have a chance to capture arrays, sorry, not the transmissions in good time. Okay, so we're ready to upload. Just make sure that your COM ports are set. So I've got COM3 here and I've got COM7 here. Now I'll upload that and upload this one. Okay, and now they've done uploading. So I'll open the serial console on both. And you can see here it's working. Now, uh, just a word of warning, this may not work straight away for you. Sometimes it'll say something like cannot transmit or something like that. If it does that, just reset the transmitter and then close the um, console here and then reopen it. And then it should work. I don't know why it does that, but, um, but it does sometimes. So anyway, um, you can see that this is transmitting, hi Sonia, to this one. This is receiving, hi Sonia, and then responding with the ACK payload. It's saying, hi Anthony, and then this one's receiving, hi Anthony. And you can see that this actually attempts to read twice per second, and it only receives once, which is correct. We want to receive, or attempt to receive, more often than, than transmit. So this is correct. So it's all working and I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to click subscribe. Um, if you have any messages or any questions, please just write those below in the comments. Okay, so once again, thank you for watching. Bye.